Hi, everybody. Thank you for your time today. Um, my name's Amavir, and I work for the Early Careers team here at Network Rail. Today, I'm just going to be talking to you about some of, a little bit about Network Rail, what our application process looks like, and then also just have a quick overview in terms of the schemes that we're recruiting for for this year's intake. Just to let everyone know before we kick off, um, so we are looking to go live in about just over a week's time and we'll be going live for all of our graduate and placement schemes uh, for those to start in the following year in 2024. So, who are Network Rail? Uh, contrary to popular belief, we don't drive trains but what we actually do is we own maintain and operate all the various infrastructure that relates to the railway itself so that could be all the tracks the viaducts the stations um all of those are under network rails remit and essentially we ensure that passengers are able to go and we work in collaboration with our train operating companies um with the aim of allowing passengers to get to their destination um we're one of the oldest railways and uh, since the Victorian times. And despite this, we are one of the safest railways in Europe. And we've delivered some of the biggest infrastructure projects in the UK, whether that's sort of related to Crossrail, uh, Birmingham New Street, for example, or the great um, Western upgrades. Um, some of the biggest and most um, high value engineering projects have been delivered by us in the past few years and uh, we have a commitment going forward uh, to continue maintaining renewing uh, our assets as passenger numbers grow uh, we are also committed to becoming a co2 uh, zero neutral by 2050 and we've got a variety of other sustainable um, initiatives in place or with the idea of making us as green a company as possible uh, we've got a variety of different roles available, and I'll be touching on those so shortly, whether that be in the engineering side of things or if that's across our business schemes. But the one thing that we will do is despite whichever scheme you go on to choose, you'll have strong support networks and mentors, line managers, uh, placement managers, and they're all there to basically ensure you get the best out of your experiences. Now, why is the railway important to the economy and generally the UK? So we take a lot of rail freight of, um, vehicles off the roads. A lot of that is then able to operate onto our freight network. Um, but on top of that, not just in terms of the actual lifting of stock and stuff, what we're able to do is we every day we take people to work. We connect people to friends, families, loved ones. We allow people to travel the rail network allow what we essentially are able to do um, whilst we are an engineering focused company we call ourselves a customer service focused organization um, because what we do enables people to live their lives connect with others and just generally go about their day-to-day -day activities we are in a bit of a state of change at the moment and soon net we Network Rail is going to be um, swallowed up and a new company is going to be for call, formed called Great British Railway. Some of you might have heard about this on the news and the TV, etc. But it's nothing to worry about. Uh, us, Network Rail, we're going to sit under a, a new body. But in essence, what that's going to allow us to do is this uh, Great British Railway is going to swallow up other bits of organisations, rail organisations. And the idea behind it is then for us to allow for a more um coordinated seamless smooth passenger journeys allowing people to get from one place to the other as quick and as efficiently as safely as possible uh, i'm gonna just touch on some of our core values quickly and the reason why will become um will become pertinent on the next slide so the first thing is always safe given the size scale and magnitude of what we do and um, the fact that we operate on a live railway environment with high-speed rail running 
across. Our first and primary focus is safety and ensuring everyone comes home safe every day. Now that's not just our colleagues on the track, but that's also the passengers who utilize our services day in, day out, ensuring that um, everyone gets home safe every day. The second thing is, is we care about our people uh, and empowering our people, developing our people, supporting our people is key to all of our activities because without the 40 odd thousand members of Network Rail, the big Network Rail team that we have, um, none of the activity would be possible. The third is teamwork. Again, just touching on the previous point, whether that's working in your own local teams, working across different teams across the business, or that might also be working with suppliers, third party organizations, people in our supply chain, different contractors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Network Rail, we're in a very unique strategic place where we have a wide spectrum of interactions with different stakeholders, um, as well as working sort of as one large company as ourselves. And therefore, working in a team, being able to work with each other is 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 critical. We're empowered to act. So if we see things that aren't safe, if we see things that aren't right, if there's more efficient ways to do things, um, everyone is encouraged to put their uh, ideas across. And I'd, ultimately, the aim is to uh, improve the railway going forward for everyone. And finally, we have a big diversity and inclusion commitment, ensuring everyone is able to bring their best selves to work every day um, because through a diverse and inclusive organisation, that's when we're able to get different diverse um, thoughts, thoughts and ideas, new ways of um, approaching problems. And um, ultimately, that makes us more efficient and effective as an organisation. Now, the application process um, is a couple of different steps to it, and I'll talk through each section uh, as we go on. The first section is a match me quiz. And what this quiz entails is you'll be asked several scenarios uh, and you'll be presented with options on what you'd be most likely to do versus what you'd be least likely to do. And the idea behind this is, is essentially you will rank what you think you would do uh, versus what you would think you'd least likely to. In terms of advice and guidance, what I would say is um, have a think about Network Rail. Have a think about some of the values which I mentioned beforehand, um, because as we're a safety focused organisation, thinking about being most safe in each of the different scenarios will probably steer you quite well. Um, Alternately, if and when you're applying for other roles um, for other companies, um, have an idea of what their values and aims are. Um, because a lot of other companies also use something similar. So say, for example, if you was working with an organization that was more sustainability focused, having a more sustainable, sustainable focused response in your match me quiz will ultimately help you to score higher. The next section is a, an online application. And this is a, a really quick bit of information about who you are, uh, what uni you study at, what um, degrees you're, apply, um, you're, you're currently studying for, um, what you're predicted, that sort of thing. Just general information about who you are, where your location is, etc. The next step is some online testing. Um, now, each, some of the online tests vary depending on which scheme you're going to be applying for. So for example, our finance schemes will have more numerically focused online testing versus where, for example, more of our operational or project management schemes. The, uh, the type of activity that you'll do online might be more planning focused, working in a team focused, um, sort of considering the railway environment as a whole. Next, you'll then move on to a video interview. And on this video interview, you'll be asked a set of questions. Um, you'll be asked, sorry, you'll be asked a question. You will then have about a minute to respond before the next question then pops up. I've got best advice that I can give on the video interview side of things is first and foremost, complete the activity where you know you won't be disturbed. So if that's sort of middle of the night, friends, family, everyone's not around, you know you've got a nice stable wi-fi connection um 
ultimate glass of water notes etc ultimately just to give yourself the best chance to just focus in on the question at hand and um, give it your best shot in essence the next tip i would give everybody is please don't let looking at the camera put you off the good thing is now in a post-covid world everyone works more sort of um, through webcams via teams zoom etc but often it can be a little bit daunting to be speaking into a camera with no one on the other end with your uh with your answers being recorded so please don't let that throw you off and try not to keep looking at yourself in the, the camera the small window at the bottom of the screen Finally, the final tip on the video interview side of things is the types of questions and the things we want to know are sort of your motivations for wanting to work for Network Rail. What do you want to, why do you want to work for us? Um, what, what do you know about us? Why do you want to work for our, why do you want to go onto a particular scheme? Why does that interest you, etc.? So all more of a motivational, we want to find out really your reasons why you've applied for Network Rail. Provided you are um, successful in the video interview, the final stage is the assessment centre. Um, typically what this will involve is there's usually a one-to-one -one interview. Um, and then you will typically complete one or two different activities. One is usually a team based activity where you get together with um, a couple of other colleagues and um, you will have a set activity. And the idea is, is you've got to do a few bits in response to what's asked of you. And then finally, there's usually a small five, 10 minute presentation activity where you'll be given a brief. In terms of hints and tips and advice that I can give on the assessment side of the centre side of things is when it comes to the interview, spend a bit of time beforehand preparing, planning, understand why you want to work for us, understand why, um, what you can bring to the table. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to have an idea of some pre sort of theme questions that you can think about of when you've worked examples of when you've worked in a team when you've challenged other behaviors when you've had to take the initiative and if you can before you go into the interview itself you've got an idea of sort of general questions that are answered at interviews and some almost responses of that can then help you when you're in the live environment sort of um, recall on certain instances and interactions you've had the second tip i'd like to give i give on the uh on the interview side of things is please don't worry we're not looking to catch anybody out often the person you're going to, person you're going to be uh, interviewed by is you often a previous graduate sometimes it will be the scheme manager themselves and often we're just trying to find out more about you who you are what you're like as a person um, there's no trick questions no one's looking to really try and trip you up or anything and often if you struggle with a question and you need it rephrased in a certain way um we're more than happy to do so the the other bit of advice i would give on the group activity is um first and foremost remember that we're when you're doing the activity whilst the end result of what you produce is important to a degree what's more important is how you interact as a team how you work with colleagues are you taking on board each other's ideas are you developing on each other's ideas are you uh, or are you more just overtaking the conversation and controlling the conversation if that makes sense um, so what we're really looking for on the group um, exercise side of things is, is it's really how you work as a team how you interact with each other how you deal with the challenges um, not so much what the end result is uh, and there would be my big tips when it comes to the assessment center itself um sort of more general points on the assessment center if it's uh, in person have a look make sure your travel plans are arranged beforehand make sure you've got an idea of when you're going to get there give yourself plenty of time before you uh, attend the day itself um because you know sometimes things can go wrong etc put yourself in the best frame of mind to really give it your best shot and the final point is throughout the application process if you have a reasonable adjustment or have any reasons to require a reasonable adjustment, 
please do let us know. We try and let we try and give uh, candidates the option at every stage to sort of disclose if they require any reasonable adjustments. It doesn't go against you in any form. It just makes sure we're able to sort of take practical steps to allow you to perform to the best of your ability uh, throughout the process. So you can just really highlight um, why you're the best person for the job. Uh, so we have a couple of different year in industry placements. So generally with our year in industry placements, they last just over 10 months. Um, and the idea is, is uh, obviously a lot of people will be in sandwich years to give you a real exposure to what it's like to work on the railway. You'll be sitting within a local team um, and you'll have a chance to experience a few different areas of the business. Uh, but the idea behind it is, is unlike a grad scheme, which is more formally consistent of rotations because of the length of time. Uh, what we try and do is while you're here, try and get you involved in some real nice nitty gritty pieces of um, work that's going on, which has a real change to people's people's lives. And if you are successful on our year in industry placements, often you will be uh you will be guaranteed a, a, a unconditional place on our graduate scheme once you complete university. The placement schemes that we've got this year, so we've got uh, engineering schemes on civil, electrical and mechanical. The only thing I would stipulate for each of these schemes is that we require them to be accredited by certain um, organizations because once you finish your grad scheme we then support chartership etc so for the civils i believe you have to have a degree accredited by the ice by the mechanical the imeki and then the electricals the iet for the rest of the schemes we are open and we don't have any specific uh backgrounds disciplines that you have to have but obviously um certain degrees might be more favorable for certain schemes as you go through the process, such as the finance, because you might have more of an IT content, um, a more of a finance background and a similar sort of thing with our IT um, schemes too. But that doesn't mean just because you, um, if you've not done a IT um, specific degree that you couldn't apply for it if it takes your fancy. The other thing to note is what we ask for is that you are on track to have a 2-2 two -two, uh, and, and that's really our only sort of um, big entry requirement that we have. In terms of benefits, so your salary will be 19,000, but that will be pro rated across the 10, the, the, the 10 plus um, months that you're with us. We also get five days worth of char um, charity leave where we're able to support different charities. Um, you also have 28 days annual holiday, again, slightly less, just based on the pro rating for the 10 plus months that you'll be working. And that doesn't include any of the bank holidays either. Uh, and as mentioned, if you do well, we'll um, most get an unconditional offer straight onto the graduate scheme. And then on top of that, we offer a whole host of different benefits. I've listed the one in terms of the season ticket below, but there's a whole host of different things where you can get money off uh, mobile phone contracts, gym memberships, um, different um, employee benefits, um, different types of services, chiropractic, et cetera, that sort of thing. Uh, now, just talking swift, moving swiftly on to our summer placement schemes. So the way our summer placement schemes are consisted of, uh, they are six, just over six weeks long. And the idea behind our summer placement schemes are for those of you who might not be doing a degree which has a sandwich year built in, but you still want to pick up some experience, you still want to um, have a chance to work at Network Rail to understand what we're about. Um, this gives a perfect opportunity for you to still pick up some experience uh, whilst going through um, your degree. Typically, they last start sort of uh, end of June and then roll for the six weeks, but and then you'll be starting back at uni in September. Again, we ask for candidates who are in their sort of second year to apply for these summer placement schemes. And similar thing with the year in industries, the salary is 19,000. Again, that's pro rata for the time that you're here. And in terms of the different um, pathways that we have, so again, our engineering schemes, some project management, general management, finance, 
and some network strategy planning and analysis schemes. Cool. And again, similar sort of things in terms of benefits. Um, whilst or prorated, because you are considered a network rail employee whilst you are with us, you get a whole host of um, benefits that every other um, permanent network rail employee has. What happens typically with our summer placements, what will happen is, is unlike our year in industry schemes where you've been here for 10 months and you get a straight fast track, often our summer placement schemes, you'll get a fast track immediately to our assessment centre and then go on to apply from there. The reason why we go assessment centre and as opposed to a, a guaranteed offer, is just because um, we've had less time for you to be in the business and therefore, uh, you, you're bumped to a degree, but we put you back at the assessment centre process. But as you're fast track straight to AC, talking about what you've been up to at Network Rail, what you've been doing, the experience you had whilst on your whilst on the, in the interview side of things, most candidates, some placement students who who get fast track to AC, go on and get an offer straight away. Often they'll be interviewed by the person who was their placement manager while they were there. And that was it from me. Uh, I just wanted to sort of give a, a quick whistle stop tour in terms of Network Rail, our application process, the types of schemes that we've got on offer for this year. As I mentioned, we're going to be going live next week, mid next week for um, accepting applications. But if anyone would like to find out more, would like to know exactly when we're going to be going live, please feel free to scan the QR code in front of you. Um, and that will take you to your register and uh, register your interest page uh, where you can sign up and you'll find out more about when we go live as well as receive different bits of case studies and information about current students, etc. Um, before I go, does anybody have any questions at all or anything they'd like to ask me? Oh, I can't hear you. I wonder if... Mute. Ah, still can't hear you. It might just be me. It might just be me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I can see the chat. So what I'll do is I'll just have a little, little look at the chat. And if anyone's got any questions, just feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll answer as we go along. Um, so are there any placements offered for the 2024 summer period? Yes, Scott, you're correct. Um, so if you apply now in October, November time, we'll then um, you, they will be then to start for the following summer. So Sweeten, the placement schemes are for undergrads only. But if you have graduated already, we do also have graduate schemes available. Uh, funnily enough, I think I'll be doing a webinar in the next couple of weeks as part of National Graduate Week with Career Map. Um, so either register your interest here to find out more, or I'll be back on in a, in a few weeks' time to talk about our graduate schemes. Um, Sylvia, in terms of percentages, I don't have them to hand. Um, all I can say is what we try and do, that there's a big recruitment on and support in our, our, our diversity statistics and bringing people in that represent the population that we're serving. Amy, in terms of is there anything we should avoid doing in the assessment centre? Uh, in terms of just generally my own personal experiences, I found those that have... Um, who yes back <laughs> did you hear me now all good all good oh my goodness <laughs> yes i was trying to say tj said the questions i can't see anymore now but tj said um what is the biggest challenge that network rail is facing and how can those interns or graduates help i think at the moment um network rail is in a real state of transition at the moment as we become great british railway uh, and at the moment, there's a lot of work going on in terms of how we 
change in how we operate and our practices and the way we work in teams, etc. Uh, as an intern, I think this is a great time to come in because you'll have a a bit more flex. You'll have the flexibility to, with change comes opportunity, and being able to be in the right places, speaking to the right people while all this change process is going on. Um, having an understanding of network rail, getting some experience of being here completing your studies and then coming back on the graduate scheme, a lot of the change processes and stuff that are going on at the moment will start to settle. And that should then provide a whole lot of different opportunities for you to come in and basically help to progress your career, career quicker. Perfect. And um, we got one from Jack there. Obviously you were saying before, but what departments or teams are available for interns and can I express a preference Yes, in terms of uh, preference, so we have our different schemes specifically that I mentioned before, but within those, typically what will happen is is you'll be placed with a local team who will um, basically make sure you set up, etc., and give you bits and bobs to do. But absolutely, once you're in, um, you'll have the chance to speak to your placement manager to say, look, this is the type of stuff I'm interested in, or I'd like to see this, etc. And because you're not... Um, as an intern or, or when you're on one of our early career schemes and you're not in a job per se, that gives you a lot more flexibility to go see things, look at things and find things that interest yourself. Perfect. Um, Sweden says, all right, I'm interested in graduate schemes. How do I get more information on being a part of the webinar? Um, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, if we're all about the grad one, um, sorry, the career map one, I'm assuming have a... Have a keep an eye out because uh, career map. I'm guessing you guys will be sending some more comms out when that's going live. Oh yes, uh, yes, of course. Yes, so keep keep an eye on. Or if you just like to find out more when we go live for the grad schemes, QR code this, um, and you'll be sent to a register your interest page, and you'll be the first to know when we go live. Perfect. And uh, question from Jack again. Jack says thanks. Before also, how does Network Real handle feedback and evaluation of interns' performance? Um, so in terms of, if you mean feedback in terms of, of how you found the experience, we tend to have at the end of the placement, we'll have, uh, you have a catch up with your line manager to sort of discuss how you've got on, what you've liked, not liked. And then we then try and take that, that feedback on board, um, to improve the schemes for, 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 for future years. Um, if it's in terms of about about your own performance, you'll have regular catch ups with line managers, placement managers, checking up how you're getting on. Do you need any support? That sort of stuff. Sweet. Um, also for internships, do you have a, uh, a number where you think you've hired, you know, each year, is there a number of internships that are interns that join? Yes. Uh, so this year, if you bear with me a second, I think I've got the numbers to hand, actually. We are recruiting for around 70-odd year in industry, so the, the 10 placements. And then we've got another 30, 40, uh, six-week ones as well. Perfect. Uh, Sally says, can you share any success stories of former interns have gone to have successful careers with Network Real. Ooh, now yes, I. So I couldn't tell you any specific just off the, off the top of my head, but there's a lot of people who are in senior management, etc., who have who came through, started on the graduate schemes, and basically developed their way up through the business. And that's why our early careers programs work quite well because they've been we've been doing these since way before like say 2000 for example when network rail wasn't even a company and it was called british railway and stuff like that so um we have a longer history of bringing graduates and people from university through i think even like our ceo andrew haynes he started off as an apprentice uh and and, and now he's ceo so yeah in our in our early career schemes yeah a lot of people go on to become senior managers heads of departments um cfo ceos that sort of stuff as well uh and there's there's it's a route that's well trodden put it like that yeah um it'd be great to, to ex show some exposure on that with a film piece in the future possibly yes, yeah <laughs> absolutely here we are by tim Jackson says, what resources or support does Network Real provide for interns who may need accommodations or specific needs? 
Um, honestly, that sounds quite a specific question. What I would say is if you're thinking of apply, applying to him and you've got any specific reservations or questions pertinent to yourself, uh, we have a, um, a helpline and a contact um, email address where you can ask more questions and find out more for if, if there's anything specific to yourself. Perfect. There you go, Tim. Um, here's one for me. Now, for internships, do you um, have a set time to of what you're doing at day to day or is it more lenient? More lenient. What we tend to find is your first few weeks, months will be like sort of prepped and planned for you by the person, your, your, your placement manager. But then I think it's very much about conversations and stuff and opportunities available. And if you've got a specific interest in things, then it's, it's moldable to a degree. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, obviously, internships or being an intern is pretty daunting. Well, just like any other uh, apprenticeship or graduate scheme. Um, how do you make that person feel comfortable when they just joining an hour of real? Uh, so there's a couple of things. Typically with volunteers, what happens is when you join, you'll have a placement manager and that'll be the person that's ultimately responsible for you whilst you're here. So if you've got any questions about how you're getting on, how the, how the, how the, how the schemes go in, are you ticking off the competencies? Because often with sandwiches, everyone has to have certain bits of an experiences and stuff that you do just to make sure you're getting all the bits you need to support your university degree and studies. Usually uh, our interns will have a, 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 a buddy that's typically like a former graduate or a current graduate uh, who's there just from a, from a more of a sort of similar age, someone who's been in a sort of similar situation. So if you ever has, have any questions that you don't want to ask somebody more senior, so to speak, um, there's, there's that available. And then typically people have like a line manager uh, and that's the person just on your day to day, just making sure you're getting the support and stuff that you need. Huh? Perfect. Great. Uh, Jason, just put a question there. Are any, are there any specific goals or key performance indicators that interns are expected to meet during their internship? So we don't have any set specific KPIs sort of when you join in terms of all intern students must do X, Y, Z. But it is case of when you have your um, conversations with your your placement managers on a one to one basis, they'll sort of figure out what you'll be doing, what's expected, that sort of stuff. Perfect. But generally, not to spook anybody out, generally most of our placement students go on to apply or continue their careers at, at, at NR. So it, it's not like, mm -hmm. it's not like The Apprentice, i.e. I, the, the TV show. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure about, I know, I know some companies have statistics where it's like, say for apprenticeships, you're like 85% of <laughs> apprentices go on to pursue within that company. What is there for Network Real? Do you know? Do you know what? Not off the top of my head. And it's probably something I should it's know. Quite high, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we tend to find a lot of people because I'll get involved in the interviews and stuff as well. And yeah, we, we, I'll see them in like a year or two's time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> nice to see you back. Perfect. Um, got some questions coming in here now. Uh, Vince says, can you practice the online testing? I think that was a, a question previously. Or can you recommend any sites to practice? Honestly, not particularly. A lot of the tests are quite specific to the to, to the schemes themselves. All I would say is just give yourself the best opportunity to do it when you're fresh, got time to focus, no distractions, and give it your best shot. Perfect. Um, I will expand on that. Scott says, how long is the application process expected to take? Uh, so in terms of the timelines, it can take a little while. Generally, we try and wrap up our assessment centers sort of early 2024, so sort of February time. January, February time is when we kick off a lot of our assessment centers, mm -hmm. and you sort of find out shortly afterwards. Perfect. Uh, well, Scott says, is, is there usually a set month? So that probably would be February, would it? Uh yeah, I say for, uh, say March for for, March. for for just to cover cover myself. Say March. <laughs> yeah, no problem. 
Um, Amy says, is there anything we should avoid doing in the assessment center? I'm, I'm sure there's a few. Um, from what I've seen personally, I found, for example, in the group exercises, mm -hmm. people that haven't done really well and haven't done too great in the past, or sometimes those that don't talk, and it sounds really silly to say, but we can only measure you and mark you and assess you based on what you say during that activity or what you do during that activity. Yeah. You could be the, the best person in the world for the role, but if in that time we're not we don't see that you, you don't contribute, etc. then it, it really doesn't help. Uh, the only other things I would say is on the other hand of things is sometimes people are, I, I get it. Enthusiasm, adrenaline's kicking, nerves are in. Usually you're on your third shot of espresso. Um, sometimes it's easy to, sometimes some candidates will dominate the conversation, the whole teamwork activity and not let anyone chip in. Again, we want to see how you interact and work together as a team. So I think there's just a bit of a fine balance. And the only other thing I'd say on the assessment centre is it's usually super clear when somebody hasn't spent a bit of time just researching the company or why they want to work there. Um, I'm not suggesting you have to go war and peace, find out loads of different bits. But even if you if you if you're coming to an assessment center, I would say you probably have a good chance at landing the role, spending a few hours net researching network rail, who we are, what we're doing, etc. Just on an evening, we'll put you in really good state. Perfect. Uh, we'll expand on that. Um, do you get any feedback if you're unsuccessful? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of everyone will get will get um, feedback. Amazing. Perfect. Um, Arnold says, are there any opportunities for interns to attend industry conferences, workshops or seminars to further their professional development? Uh, generally, yes. Uh, well, it's usually a conversation with your line manager at the time. If I don't know, there's a super important thing going on and there's a conference, the chance might be no. But generally, yeah, everyone's usually quite supportive of our early careers. Um, people in our early careers programs doing stuff to support their development and learning stuff and stuff like that. Decent. Perfect. Um, Helen says, can you provide information on the geographical locations where interns are typically placed and are there opportunities for international placements? So not so much for international placements on our internship side of things. Mm -hmm. Generally with locations, it just depends on the different schemes. So because we, we recruit based on where our business requires um, the support, or, um, uh, what I would say is when we go live, if you have a look at our website, we'll have all the locations on there. Okay, perfect. Um see we're all done for questions last anyone's got any at the minute like you want to add in um obviously for an intern um what would be the sort of transferable skills that you think would set you apart compared to like apprenticeships and graduate schemes obviously you need like problem solving skills you know um yes networking is there any things that you think is specific for an internship you know what? I think um, the networking, but the team working, and also, oh, it's not really a skill, but just just being not afraid. Like what yeah, you'll find is, yeah, yeah, is what you'll find is um, there'll be plenty of opportunities there, and often, probably about eighty percent of the time, if there's something you want to see, or there's, there's there's something you want to experience, or you've heard of something going on generally just having the confidence to drop somebody an email to say hey i've heard i don't know there's this uh, overnight possessions going on and some maintenance i'd like to see it kind of come along um and usually people are receptive to, to, to letting you come on board letting you shadow etc but it's just the the the, the having the 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 the, emphasis, the the impotence to go and ask and to put yourself out there perfect and um, hopefully we get a few of the people here who would like to do that. Uh, Scott says, thank you for your answer before. No problem, Scott. Is this application timeline the same for both summer placements and the year-long ones? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Might vary a little bit, but generally in terms of timelines, etc. yeah, we're going to go live in about a week. We're going to try and close before Christmas. What I would say is certain schemes are more popular than others. So if you are interested, please do apply early because once we have enough applications, we do tend to close those schemes down. 
uh and then yeah we'll we'll assess in sort of early 2024 and then everyone yeah you'll find out um the results of sort of by that much time so what you're saying is apply asap yeah 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 just uh, to avoid disappointment to avoid disappointment mm-hmm. and um for obviously that the intern programs uh once you get chosen how are you made you just made a wire through email i'm guessing or a phone call yeah Sorry, say that again. I just you're made aware that obviously you've got accepted for the internship. Do you just like get a phone call or? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So like when you apply, you'll have like an account made in our little platform thing where you'll be going in and out of. Uh, So you'll be kept up to date with comms there, but also. after the assessment center, touch wood if you've been successful, etc. Yeah, you'll definitely get a buzz from the recruitment team, and we'll let you know. Perfect, great. Um, we've still got we've got twenty minutes here. Uh, do you have any advice that you would like to give for the people who would maybe want to go for an internship at Network Real? I think, uh, in terms of advice, what I would say is. Best thing is ha- have a little read of the company, have a little understanding of what we're about. See if that aligns with you. Because the thing as well is um, with the assessment process, a lot of the time, um, what I always stress to people is that it's a two way, it's a two way thing. So if during your interactions, if when you're researching, you don't like the sound of the company, you don't like the way they treat, etc. Trust you've got and often sometimes that might not be the right place for yourself either. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I think that is all for us today. Fantastic. So, thank you very much, Amavir. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and thank you for Amavir for taking us through the interns that Network Real offer, give us advice, and of course, answering everyone's questions. Remember, it is recorded, so you can find it on the YouTube within the coming week. I oh, just got Scott one coming in there. Um, are there any figures available for usual numbers or applicants versus the number of available positions offered? Ooh, so it does depend versus popularity in locations, etc. But generally what we try and do is if we have one role, we try and accept around sort of um, 10 to 12 applications and that accounts for people um, failing at the different stages, etc. But uh, what we do find is some some locations will 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 have loads of applications for, and some some not so much. So it it really just does depend on the scheme and the location. Perfect. Okay. There you go, Scott. Um, that is all for us. Yes. Thank you very much. Remember to go on to our uh, socials where you'll find um us two speaking once again on YouTube. We're just about hit fifty thousand subscribers as well. So yeah. if you want to add to that. That would be very helpful. Thank you very much, guys. Hopefully, you'll see um, some content from Network Real on our channel very soon. We will get in contact, shall not we? Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Appreciate everyone taking time out the day to come and listen. So, no, really, really appreciate it. And best of luck in everyone's studies and future careers as well. Perfect. Cheerio, guys. Thank you very much. I'm over here. Cheers. Take care now. See you later. Bye.